For those of you listening to our podcast right now, you can also check out our video podcast at a little something extra podcast.org. Okay, everybody, whoop, whoop. we are here again for another episode of A Little Something Extra. I am Nancy Gianni, and I am here with my co-host, the DG of this Playhouse. Woo! We had a little bit of attitude and a little bit of dancing, and guess who else we have here? In his own little corner, our a producer, producer Diani. Woo! Hey, everyone. <laughs> all right, so today's episode is all about breaking free and escaping from labels. Like, I love that. But first, let's start with a reminder of what it means to be something extra. Something extra. Your little extra. something extra. Oh, there it is. Your little something extra is your superpower. <laughs> Not, again, like, you, you know, you're flying through the sky, but your little something extra that makes you who you are, that fuels your passion, that motivates you, that makes you be the best possible you that you can be. So as, on the sh- as the show goes on, think about today, like, what is your superpower? Think about that mm. as it goes through so that when you leave today, you're motivated, you're passionate, and you're out there reaching your goals. That's what this is all about. So, Jade, what do you think your superpower is? My superpower is being strong, not like a superman. Oh. But n- not best strong for the world around me. Nice. To never cut knock down. To never get knocked down. Whoop, whoop. I love it. You are stronger than me, Mm -hmm. Gigi. Every single day when I'm feeling weak. Oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) Every single day when I'm feeling weak and unmotivated, I think about the fact that Gigi has low muscle tone. She has to teach her body to do everything that comes naturally to the rest of us. And it's hard. It's much harder to get through the day than it is for me. So what am I complaining about? So she motivates me every single day I do. to be strong. It's your strength that gives me strength that allows me to do all the things that I'm doing in the world. Right? Right. That's why you're here, right? Right. Why? That's why I'm here. Because to use my strength to motivate others. Boom. Drop the mic. mic. (laughs) (laughs) You beat her to it. (laughs) You better believe it, baby. Speaking of strength and escaping from labels, Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's kind of a perfect segue to get into our uh, something extra moment this week. So um, I saw this awesome story in the Mm -hmm. Tribune uh, that I was just I was just kind of like. You know, reading the paper casually. Um, so, <laughs> in your slippers. Oh yeah, I'm very old, I'm very old fashioned. <laughs> I was sitting there, it was my, mm-hmm. had my morning coffee and my slippers and my robe. Yep. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there is a there's a Chicago high school student um, in the Chicago suburbs who is breaking down barriers with his artistic ability um, while using his talents to give back to others, which is so awesome. His name is Emmett Kiyoshi Wilson. So when Emmett was born, his parents were told mm-hmm. that their son may never hold a pencil, and I think. It's kind of a common thing when kids are born with Down syndrome. They immediately stamp a label on them and say, nope, they're not going to be doing this, or you, they're probably not going to do this, so don't hold your expectations high, which is so wrong. So wrong. Um, well, Emmett proved his doubters wrong by becoming quite the artist. Uh, when Emmett was just four years old, he began painting. Um, and then years later, when Emmett hosted his first art show, he actually hosted 225 attendees at his art show and in thousands of dollars selling his paintings. So to top it off, he donated all of his earnings to charity. And I think the charity that he gave to first was ND... A.S.? Just say he gave it all the charity. He gave it all the charity. And then Mm -hmm. uh, that was just the beginning. Since then, he has hosted even more art shows, raising, I think, tens of thousands of dollars. um, And Mm -hmm. it started giving it back to all sorts of charities. I know his big charities that he wants to give to are the ones that are the healthcare workers during uh, during times of COVID. So he's been very big on giving back to that. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, just such an incredible person, right? I mean, to just go out there and to make that art and realize, you know, it's not just for me. I want to actually be able to give back with this talent that I have. So, I mean, awesome. I saw that and I thought, oh, and then also on top of that, something I was missing, um, one of the things that is his favorite quote is from Dr. Seuss. And it's, uh, the quote is, why be the same when you're born to be different? 
And I think that is such a perfect example of just escaping from those labels. You get that label stamped on you, but you're born to be different. All of so, us are born to be different. Exactly. So talk about escaping Woo. labels and really just channeling that something extra. So I thought that was really a special moment. That is an awesome something extra moment. Yeah. Okay, girl, are you ready to meet an incredible woman who has spent her entire life trying to escape the labels that try to define her? Oh, yeah, girl, I'm ready to talk to her. All right, baby. All right, me too. Today, Gigi and I are talking to an incredible woman who has been an absolute rock star for the Down Syndrome community mm. in Britain. She is an mm -hmm. actress that has starred in many different British movies and TV shows. She most recently starred in a show called The A Word. She is a professional dancer for the Culture Device Dance Project. She is also a motivational speaker. Her most notable speech is a TED Talk mm -hmm. titled Escape from Labels, Be Free, Be Different. She has received an honorary mm -hmm. law degree from the University of Nottingham, and the icing on the cake mm -hmm. was when Prince Charles awarded mm -hmm. her with an MBE, which means she is now a member of the Order of the British Empire. Ooh, Empire. My favorite word. She is also a part of the Queen's Birthday Honors List for her service to the arts and people with disabilities. She was the first woman with Down syndrome to receive an mm -hmm. MBA, an honorary law degree mm -hmm. in Britain, and believe it or not, she is here with us today. Welcome, Sarah Gordy. We are so excited to have you. Hi, Sarah. I'm the DG of Jewish Playhouse. And I am her mom, Nancy, and we are so excited to have you on our... Something Extra. Yeah, our Something Extra podcast. How are you today, girl? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, my goodness. So where exactly are you? Where do you live? I live in Lewis, Sussex, in England. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I've <laughs> always wanted an accent like yours. I <laughs> love the way you talk. Doesn't she talk cool? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love it. So I want, you've mm -hmm. done, like, some absolutely amazing things in your life. I've, I've been researching you, and I want to be you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um... Where should I start? Uh, let's see. Let's start. I know. I hear people say that because, well, I can tell you my favorite thing oh in learning about you is is how you started in acting was really at your kitchen table, wasn't it? With your mom. Yes. And actually, I've been waiting to do this all day. You learned it at your kitchen table with your mom. I love that you call your mom your mom. I just think that's so awesome. You want to call me mom? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I like it anyway. <laughs> so tell me about that. I think that's so cool because it's... So imagin imaginative and so creative, and a great way to teach you language. Yeah, a, a thing for me is um, we always um, sit, tell stories at my mum's table. I always acted, so it, it's just come from there, really. And uh, my sister and I always um, entertain families and friends. At Christmas time, wearing painting mask and put mask on, and that's how I found my my talent. Wow, and that's amazing. And it started really just at the kitchen table. I heard, you know, your mom was saying that you know you weren't as at school. She wasn't really happy what was going on, but at the kitchen mm -hmm. table, when you got to tell stories, that you just lit up. And if you didn't make the stories creative enough, she would ask you to dig deeper and find something else. And I love that. I wondered how you were able to do it because I've watched you and the different things that you've been in and how you're able to perform is just, I mean, absolutely amazing. So when you were doing that, did did you always know then that you wanted to be an actress? I always acted, if I don't have a character in my head, I'll be lonely. Oh. So it's, it, it's been a fantastic year for me, mm -hmm. so... Uh, yeah, tell us about your year. You have some, what have you been doing, especially now during COVID and everything else? What have you been up to? Well, I've been writing poetry as well, so. Excellent. Yeah. A poet as well. You are a multi-talented girl because you also dance, correct? Yes. Tell me about that dance company. Don't you work with some mm -hmm. dance company? Yeah, Coast of Device, yeah. And it's run by Daniel Face. And uh, I've been dancing with him 
and I'm also did Capoe as well. So wow, that's amazing! You have just done a lot of, I mean, so much of everything. And Gigi, I know you had a question here. Is it hard being an actress? It is hard to be an act actor because um, many nines is takes up my time, and. Uh, you just have to learn one line, turn the other line, and you keep on repeating it and uh, all that. It's and uh, and you have to keep on doing it. So um, you have to get it really right yeah. and get my performance more smoothly. So, yeah. It is hard. That's, that is a lot of work. I don't think people understand that. Memorizing all of that and really knowing how you have to deliver it. You, there's a lot of research that goes into being an actor and, and just a lot of behind the scenes work. So that's what makes what you do so special. It's really amazing, really amazing. How do you remember so many lines? <laughs> well, she was saying she practices hard, right? Well, I do, I do practice really hard, but it, it is really hard, but it can be boring at times. But um, I enjoy reading lines and make my um, performance more in smoothly and everybody loves it. Yes, they do love mm -hmm. it. I love it for sure. I loved listening to everything, um, everything that you were talking about. Can you tell us a little about your new show? It's Ruff and Katie, the spin-off. Uh -huh. And... Um, have you seen the A word, the third A word? Yes. Oh, it's a spinoff? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. So yeah. when did you start? Did, it, did the production start yet? Done the third series of the A word. And uh, um, when Ralph and Katie got married, it's their first yeah. year of their marriage. Excellent. Oh, and that's that so cool. You will see that in the spin-off. Ooh, that's exciting. When does it release? It will be released by September. Sorry, it's been filmed in September. Wow, amazing. You just don't stop. So I, there was one thing, um, you've paid, played many different roles and, and, and with it being the character, of a person with Down syndrome. And I know you have said before, see the actor, not the disability. That was a great quote. I love that quote. What does that mm. quote mean to you? See the actor, not the disability. What does that mean to you? It's not a problem, the opportunity. Excellent. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. And when I see you, all I see is potential. All I see is beautiful. And all I see is opportunity. So you're right. I don't see anything else there. That's awesome. Um, so wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I also heard, girl, mm -hmm. Gigi, did you know this? She's also a motivational speaker. Uh. What don't you do? You do it all. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to tell you. Oh, boy. Loved your TED Talk. <laughs> that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Girl power for sure. Girl power. Girl power. Killing mm -hmm. it. Um, there was a quote from you that, that I love saying. I may have Down syndrome, but that's not who I am. I mean, I love to hear that. That Yes, that's a piece of you, but that that is just one small part of you, just like anything else that you have red hair or I have ears. I have Down syndrome. It's just a part of you. What does that mean to you? I love that you, that you really talk about that. I am a woman and an actor first, and I am a lot of different things. Absolutely. You are a mother, but you have a different things too. Absolutely. Well, thank mm. you for recognizing that. That is mm. awesome. You are awesome, I have to tell you. Really amazing. You also have an honorary <laughs> doctor degree in law, and you are a member of the Order of the British Empire. You are the first person to do mm. both of those things. What do those achievements mean to you? And how cool was it to meet Prince William? That's really the most important thing I have to say here. <laughs> how cool was it with Prince William? He was lovely to, to actually meet him. He really put me 
uh, is, and oh. we talked about lots of things that I have been working on. So yeah, he's 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 friendly, he's lovely to be with, and uh, and it was really on on it was really a great honor to get the MBA and degree in all. Right, that's amazing. That is amazing, and especially really bringing that forward and being that first person with Down syndrome. That that you know you're leading the pack for all these guys. You know that, right? Yeah. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel happy and encouraging other people to do what I want to do and make their dreams come alive. It, yes. You are fantastic. I read about you speaking. This was something I thought was really cool. Mm. When you were speaking at a school one time, you said dreams mm. come true when you are fit and healthy. Mm. And I believe that 100%. Can you tell me about that? I, that, I, just, I just thought that that was mm. such a great message to share with people. And I just, I, I would love to hear mm. more about it. Well, I always encourage other people when, to get fit and healthy and eat heavy, heavy foods is very important for their well-being. Absolutely. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. And working out just makes you feel good. So when you work out and you're healthy, everything is better in life, isn't it? Yeah. I would go every day, so I do good. I eat healthy and I love 30 pounds. What kind of workout do you do? Okay, well, I, I do some arm work and I also do cardio, but I'm also, I'm a runner because I run in American, because I have an American dad. Oh. I, used to, uh, I used to run in Special Olympics in America. Awesome. And I have in Texas, which is a great honor. So, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah, this podcast is all about a little something extra. All of us have that little something extra inside us <laughs> that we're born with it. And sometimes we find it and sometimes we don't. And it really it's it's that it's that part of you that fuels your passion and your motivation. It's that part of you that makes you go out and be you every day. It's kind of like our superpower. What do you think is your superpower or your something extra? <laughs> It's a tough question, but um, <laughs> my superpower has to be happiness. Oh. And get, getting along with everybody and uh, everyone mm -hmm. who's different, disrespecting them. And that, <laughs> that's a beautiful, beautiful superpower. <laughs> happiness and spreading happiness and respect. Mm -hmm. Wow. You gave me goosebumps, girl. That's a beautiful <laughs> answer. That's a Thank really you. beautiful answer, and you're a really beautiful person. In the United States, there's it's, we're still kind of fighting like an ongoing battle with uh, with trying to find acceptance for all people, and just having that sense of respect and, and admiration for people that go out there and, and fight to just want to have happiness, like you said, every single day. And and I think we're just a little bit curious as to how across the pond how that is in, in Britain and how you've kind of uh, had to fight and tried to um, have that acceptance that you so well deserve. And I think that's something that I would love to, uh, love to hear about. Okay, is um, you just have to rip off the labels. They just have to have respect with different people like us and other people out there that's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Has it? Li do you think having Down syndrome has limited your? I know it hasn't limited your ability. Has it limited your opportunities to act to no, be able to get yet, parts? No, because no, I um, they had to take me as a as a person not that's been d Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. You can actually we have to abandon that attitude. Basically, mm. because of we can't live like that. No, we want to live in a in a positive country, in a positive way to get positive in, and the positive in, so we could get Down syndrome power. 
Down syndrome, power, woo! I like it. Mm-hmm. Yes, see past the diagnosis and see into the power of that person. Girl, I love it. Woo! Thank you. I love it. That is fantastic. Now I see why you've done everything you've done. How long have you known you needed to be on stage? Since you were a baby? Since I was little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so awesome. So you've been living your dream your whole life. Yeah. Wow. Not too many people can say that. Do you have any siblings? I have my my sister, Catherine. Okay. And oh. uh, she, she lives in London in England. And uh, she's, has, she's got a boyfriend and she's got a dog called oh. Blue. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. So you guys are still close because I remember in the kitchen table stories, you used to do that with your mom and your sister, right? Yeah. Are you guys still close? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that so awesome? So you said you, that your dad was here. So did you spend a lot of time in America? Yeah, we used to live in Houston, Texas. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. I love Texas. Me too. We actually have a Gigi's Playhouse in Texas, don't we? Yeah. A in lot. Houston. In Houston. We have a few of them, yes, but we definitely have one in Houston. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Did you like it out here? Yeah. Oh, good. Houston is the best storms there. Houston does get some storms. Every time we've gone there, it seems like we go there in the spring because right. every time we've gone there, there have been some pretty killer storms, yeah. hasn't there? Yeah. Not Sugarland. Sugarland's better. Not in Sugarland. Do you know where Sugarland is? That's right outside yeah. of Houston. Yeah. Yeah, Sugarland, yeah. Yep. So we went to Sugarland. <laughs> we didn't have storms. But each yeah. time we went to Houston. Blue skies. For blue skies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's not a fan of storms, so yeah. she remembers when we see them, don't you? <laughs> All right. So I wanted to tell you a little something. We do a little segment here that um, Gigi gives us some tips. Oh, boy. Uh, we're going to say it. So Gigi gives us some tips. So we always kind of go through the segment. So w- would you stick around with us for a little while more while she does her tips? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Because did her you say tips? T- oh, I did say tips. Tips. That's how she defines this segment. She <laughs> sings it every time. <laughs> and I... Like you're singing. <laughs> she loves... I'm really good at singing. You're bad at singing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're an actor and you're a dancer, so it's okay. You can't be yeah. good at everything, girl. I'm a dancer no. too, Sarah. What's that? I'm a, I'm a dancer too. Yep, she's a dancer too. Very cool. Great. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So this... Oh, I like what your tips are today. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, this, are you doing these tips because of Sarah? Yes, that, mommy. Oh, so listen to this, Sarah. Okay, mm-hmm. Jeech, go ahead. My Jeech's tips for escaping labels. Don't worry about what people think. Just do you. Do things that make you happy. Remember, you can do anything you put in your mind to. Always be generation G. Be generous. Be something, be kind. Those are pretty good mm-hmm. tips. Do you have any other tips about labels, Sarah? Well, I do have another tip uh, mm-hmm. on labels. Don't limit other people. Work hard and have fun. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Those were awesome tips. Is that what it takes to be a success like you, girl? <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We need those tips because everybody mm-hmm. can learn a little something from you. Tips. Oh, boy. Here she goes again. She's going <laughs> to sing again. Something I'm so just blown away with by Sarah, and it's so impressive, is just how um, articulate she is. I mean, Sarah, you talk beautifully, and I love your accent, and you have so <laughs> many great things to say. And I think one of the uh, the challenges that we see a lot with, uh, with individuals with Down syndrome is, is that there's a lot of individuals that are nonverbal. And I feel like there's, like, you, like you've said so much in this interview, there's so much that you have to offer and so many things to say, but, and it's, it's a blessing that you're able to get all of that out. And for Sarah's mom, is, is there anything that you did with Sarah when she was growing up that um, kind of helped her in developing her speech really well and being able to get those words that she gives out to the world, uh, the ability to get out? We did quite a lot of voice work. Uh, I'm I'm a bit of a um, a quack. I sort of reinvent the wheels, <laughs> and um, so you know we we did the um, if, if um, in in drama when you do speech work, you move 
you know, you, you, you the jaws and and everything. It's exaggerated um, movement too. That's I figured that storytelling had a lot to do with her language and 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 the theater. Yes. Yeah. Tra trauma is is such a good tool for any young young person because you know when when you're young, um, you think everybody else knows what they're doing. But nobody knows what they're doing. No but if you so do true. trauma, you can practice be, be, and take no risks. You can experience life vicariously. And it just puts you ahead of the other guys because you've been practicing for years. Yes. If you had one message to the world, what would it be? Oh, gosh, that's a really tough question. That's a hard one, right? Well, it's okay. We got time. Take a minute. Think about it. <laughs> Be happy. No matter who you are, you're just a human being. Mm. And always believe in yourself. That's good. Bam! That's a drop-the-mic moment right there, girl. Boom! <laughs> awesome. Well, I so enjoyed our time together today, Sarah. Thank and me, you. Too. And, and so did Gigi. We both enjoyed our time with you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here and sharing mm -hmm. all of your talents with us. Mm -hmm. You really blow us away. You inspire us. Mm -hmm. Your something extra is something everybody can learn from. So we are blessed to have you, blessed to know mm -hmm. you, and hope to meet you in person someday. That would be amazing. That'd be great. Yeah, yes. I love Mm -hmm. Oh, we love it. Well, thank you, girl. We love you. Mwah. <laughs>